Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zane here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online BGC 19 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. We've been trying out this Ray Ogre team for the last two episodes or so, and it is a really, really good team. I just haven't played very well with it, so hoping to have a slightly better performance today with it. I think I'll probably try this out for one more episode afterwards because I think the team is really strong and I just want to be able to improve a little bit with it and then we'll switch to something new but I've been enjoying playing games obviously it's been quite a while and I feel like I've actually learned so much in the last couple of episodes which I'm really happy about because uh, I knew coming into this uh, you know this series of videos in, in the more recent times that I you know I uh, don't have I haven't played very much at all so I have been making a lot of mistakes but I think it's good to kind of document that and really learn from it so hopefully you guys have been enjoying it as well and let's get started with today's episode um, so we're up against Lunala Groudon which is definitely a strong archetype obviously we tried that sorry not Lunala Necrozma Dawn Wings and uh, Groudon um, pretty much always want to bring Rayquaza Kyogre and Sinnoh is too good to pass up as always uh, Feeny might be a good fourth member here because of the Venusaur uh, it blocks Sleep Powders which is quite nice otherwise you actually could make a potential argument for Stack Attacka but I think I'm gonna go with Feeny um, I actually like Incineroar or Feeny which is a pretty decent option uh, Incineroar or Feeny, Incineroar or Kyogre is okay as well but I like Fe Feeny Similar to the last team, really just to slow some things down uh, with Icy Wind. So, yeah. I, part of the thing is, and what has led to two of the losses we've had with this team, is I, I don't think I, I play or set up the uh, Rayquaza well enough. Like, Bandy Rayquaza is really good, but in both of the losses, like, I was assuming that Dragon Descent would pick up the knockout. And in both losses, we ended up dealing with, like, very bulky Kyogre and very bulky Rayquaza. So... I feel like I should really be setting up KOs a little bit better and uh, distributing damage with um, with the Kyogre a little bit better. But it's going to be Groudon and Venusaur for my opponent's end. Um, hopefully you guys have been enjoying the daily content. I've been doing my best to really just, like I mentioned, get on a more consistent uh, upload schedule. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going gonna to do daily for like every day up until Sword and Shield, but definitely... The point is to basically be uploading content consistently uh, regular and regularly again so that you guys know this is you know a place for VGC content once again. So I hope you guys have been enjoying it. If you do, please show support by leaving a like. I'd really appreciate it. And thanks to all those who comment, tune in, and watch. Uh, it really means a lot. Uh, okay, so it's Groudon Venusaur here. Um, man, do I think it's going to be Z Venusaur? Because if I don't, I can just kind of switch into Rayquaza and go for an, either an Icy Wind or a Scald. Uh, alternatively, can can fake out Venusaur. So like, <sighs> yeah. is it gonna be Z? I feel like here it makes sense for Lunala to carry the Z. I'm gonna switch into Rayquaza here and go for an icy wind, expecting the Groudon to protect. Even if not, I should survive. Yeah, okay, it switches out. That's fine too. into Lele. Ah, to get a Sleep Powder off. That's actually really smart. Um, and then it blocks the Fake Out, so that's a great switch in. Uh, if my opponent doesn't Sleep Powder the Feeny though, I'm in a really good spot. Or, or just Sleep Powder in general, I guess. You'd probably Sleep Powder Feeny here. Let's see. Okay, you just Sludge Bombs. Should survive that. Yep. Hopefully no miss. Nice. Okay, so that speed decrease is really big here. Um, means I guarantee I'll speed to Scarf Lele with Rayquaza. Uh, let's see. Dragon Ascent and... I want to switch the Feeny out. Actually, it might be better not to Mega Evolve this turn. Yeah, that way I get to conserve uh, in case Groudon comes back in. So I'm actually going to not Mega Evolve and just ban Dragon Ascent the Lele. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to be slower. I need to Mega Evolve. 
and icy wind in case my opponent wants to switch out. Okay, so Layla should be going down here. Uh, question is what Venusaur does. Does it go for like a sleep powder into Venus or, or into Rayquaza, or does it just go for a uh, sludge bomb into Feeny? Um, knocking out Layla is big though. Layla is a pretty big threat to everything on this team. Namely the Rayquaza, which, like I mentioned, is the main means of offense. Uh, crit just to add insult to injury there, but gets the knockout pretty cleanly. Okay, I see win. So now Venusaur is at neutral, even if Groudon comes out. Actually, yeah, which is why it actually doesn't really matter to, it, it like, Mega Evolve. Um, okay, just opting for a Sludge Bomb. I'll take that. Because now I can just bring in Incineroar. Um... Which has quite a good matchup against both. Well, for Groudon, you get the Intimidate off, and for Necrozma, I can just Z move. Yeah. Uh, the downside here, obviously, is that I can't fake out, uh, but that's fine. Yeah, getting the Intimidate off against Groudon is already quite good. Okay. Uh, I mean, Venusaur probably wants to protect or switch out. Uh, but I don't think I can get rid getting a uh, sleep powder right now. Like that would be super bad. So I'm gonna actually Dragon Ascent and pivot out and U turn into the Groudon. If Venusaur protects, um, and it switches out, so whatever is coming in takes a banned Dragon Ascent. Oh, it is Celesteela, though. That wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting Necrozma. That's a smart option as the last one. Yeah, I was thinking if it was, like, Necrozma, the game is just pretty much over here. But that's fine. I should still take an attack from Groudon, uh, and you, the U-turn gets me to switch into Kyogre for free. Wow, Band Dragon is almost this 50% there. Uh, so that's quite nice. Oh, he actually has Rock Slide. Uh, I don't think that should knock me out. Yeah, hopefully no flinch. Okay. <laughs> I was expecting the flinch after that last episode where everything got flinched. <laughs> okay. So, a lot of uh, Groudons don't even carry a way to really hit Rayquaza. Like, you run Fire Punch, Presmus Blades, or, or if you are the special version, Eruption, Earth Power, and then something like Roar and Protect, or Swords Dance, or something like that. I don't think Swords Dance is very common, though, actually, nowadays. Um, but I get Kyogre in. Now the question is, does Celesteela have a uh, wide guard? As it's lefties, it looks like. Okay. Um, I'm going to switch back out into Incineroar. And go for the Scald. I mean, Scalding Groudon here doesn't make too much sense. Because he's almost always going to protect or wide... Well, I mean, unless my opponent gets... Plays a little risky and wide guards with Celesteela. Uh, I think it's better to actually Scald Celesteela here. Because I think Groudon almost always protects or switches out. The only downside is, yeah, my opponent could wide guard. And just, like, go for a Precipice Blades. Maybe I should have covered my options and scald the Groudon. Yeah, he did have wide guard, but uh, this is still okay. Uh, Cause it means I'll win the weather war. Yeah. So as long as I and my Kyogre is faster, so as long as I don't get crit here, oh, and he's rock sliding too, not even precipice blading, so that's all perfect. Is that a crit on Incineroar? Yeah. Uh, although that actually might have helped me just because I get the free switch and back into Rayquaza. Yeah, I think Scalding Grot on there is better because Celesteela should have Wide Guard in this format. Um, and Celesteela isn't threatening Kyogre at all. But, yeah, even if my opponent went for a Precipice Blade, it's like, that's fine. Now I've locked my opponent in where I can just Dragon Ascent, Venusaur, and Scald Grot on. Would have been a little bit dicier, actually, if Incineroar didn't go down there. So that was actually quite a favorable crit. 
Yeah, it can just drag and ascent Venusaur and Scald Groudon. Cool. Yeah, um... Yeah, Scalding Groudon there is just better, I think. Uh, Venusaur switches in, Rain is up, so that will just KO the Venusaur. Uh, Celesteela isn't doing anything. Yeah, uh, so so I was like, I'm okay with how I played other than that last turn. Because, um, well, I suppose if I didn't get the crit, I would just protect Groudon and go for the Z move into Venusaur. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't end up mattering. But, like, a crit precipice blades, and we didn't know the speeds between Kyogre and uh, Venusaur up until this point. So, yeah, we do end up getting a win, which is quite nice. Um, overall, I feel like the matchup was pretty good here. I mean, in general, against Groudon teams, when you run Waterfall, Rayquaza, Scald, and Origin Pulse, Kyogre, and uh, Tapu Fini, you have three ways to one-shot the Groudon. So, it's basically just making sure you position yourself and put yourself in a spot where any of those attacks can knock out. Um, so... Typically, I feel like Rayquaza matchups with this team, or sorry, Groudon matchups with this team are relatively favorable. All you need to do is, uh, and, and with Incineroar too, like Intimidate is obviously so good as well. Um, and if there's a Xerneas on that team, then you add Togedemaru or Stack Attacker to the equation. But yeah, wow. once again, I feel like this team is really well composed. And if you want to check it out, you can check out the creator and the team report. Uh, it's finished second in a pretty big Korean tournament linked in the description below. Uh, but yeah. I don't feel like I've played super well with Togedemaru and Stack Attacka, so gonna want to try to do more with those. But we've got another similar, another Rayogre, not Mirror, but four of the six Amons. This one's also got a Togedemaru and an Incineroar. Uh, I did importantly learn yesterday that this Rayquaza is Adamant, so Kartana uh, you know, was able to get the Tailwind off first yesterday, which was good information to note. Um, uh, do I want to go with the same four? <laughs> Togedemaru might actually be decent here. But it has to worry about the opposing Togedemaru. Uh, otherwise, Fini might be a better option. Mm. Man, I really want to bring Togedemaru. What if I let, like, Fini, Kyogre, Incineroar, Rayquaza? I actually like that, I think. Yeah, I'm not as comfortable bringing Togedemaru here because of my opponent's Togedemaru. If my opponent didn't have Togedemaru, I think I definitely would. Um, but because she does, don't feel as uncomfortable. Um, like, Kyogre and Rayquaza are almost always must brings. You could actually maybe drop Incineroar in this matchup because there is the Lele. But because I'm bringing... I, I, like, I need a better answer against Cortana, first of all. And so I feel like I kind of need the Intimidate. And because I'm bringing Tapu Fini as well, it gives me a better matchup against the Lele. Uh, Kyogre and Incineroar. Okay, nice. So, not bad to see that. Is it going to be Scarf Kyogre again? Like yesterday? No, it's not. Actually, yeah, obviously it's... It, I sh my answer, the question of that answer... The answer to that question, excuse me, was answered once Kyogre's... Uh, or once Fini's terrain went up first. Most of the times. Uh, okay. This isn't bad. Especially considering that our, our Kyogre looks to be faster, too. Uh, yesterday... I felt like I really, really should have been able to win with Feeny, but I didn't because of, uh... Well, I didn't bring Feeny in yesterday's episode, but I should have won, but I didn't because Rayquaza got to switch in for free, and it was a bulkier Rayquaza. Um, okay, so obviously Incineroar is in quite a tight position right now. I think I'm just gonna Icy Wind and... Uh, double Icy Wind could actually be really interesting, because I could see Incineroar pivoting out into... Actually, if Incineroar switches out, then I just get a free Icy Wind with Feeny, so... Yeah. Just an Icy Wind Origin Pulse. Incineroar can only fake out one of the two, so I either get some speed control and slow things down, uh, ensuring that I'll be faster, because I don't know if I speed tie right now. Um, and Heal Pulse is on this Feeny, which is actually a big deal, so my opponent, like, thunders Kyogre. 
Um, although, it does reveal that I'm... Uh, like, I've gone first twice already at this point, so it looks like I am faster. Okay, cool. Maybe Scalding Incinero would have been better there, but I just wanted to guarantee that I'm faster than my opponent's Kyogre here. Yeah, I'm gonna Heal Pulse myself this next turn. This is where having Heal Pulse is really nice. Uh, slightly different Finisa from the last one we were using. So, I can Heal Pulse my own Kyogre. Question is, does Incineroar stay in? It's kind of likely that it actually swaps out into Rayquaza or Cortana. But I'm worried about Z Incineroar. So, actually Scald might be a better option because I don't really need the damage against Kyogre anyway. Yeah, I'm going to Scald Incineroar. That gets the knockout if Rayquaza switches in. Um, I guess that's the main concern. Uh, if Cortana switches in, it's going to take so much damage. It's, if it's not a Salt Vest, it'll probably just knock it out um, or bring it down to a potential Sash. I don't know. Maybe I should be Icy Winding here, but Kyogre's the one swapping out. Okay, cool. Into Rayquaza? No, Togedemaru. Is my opponent double switching? Nope. I mean, Origin Pulse would have been super free then, but... Yeah, uh, I'll still take that turn. Because uh, I feel uh, I heal up Kyogre all the way back up, too. Okay, nice. So it's a, it's a really big deal also that my I, my Kyogre is just... It looks like it's naturally faster, given that it did Primal Revert first. Uh, and we got the attack off first as well. Okay, so Rayquaza comes out. That's fine, so we know all of my opponent's Pokemon at this point. Um, I've got Incineroar, which is obviously quite a good switch in entire this position right now. I'm worried about Fake Out Swords Dance like we saw in yesterday's episode. Um, I definitely want to switch out into Incineroar in one of the slots. I've revealed Icy Wind on Feeny, so the question is, like, because I have Icy Wind on both, I might actually just stay in and double Icy Wind here, because it slows down Rayquaza and it means I'll be faster going into the next turn, even if it means taking a Band of Dragon Ascent with one thing. So I'm actually going to go for that, because I don't want, like, Rayquaza just to sweep through everything, and right now, you can only knock out one of my two Mons, and it's worth getting an Icy Wind off uh, for losing one of the Pokemon, I think. Best case is honestly just like a fake out Sorzans comes out and instead like Rayquaza just takes like 50%. Um, fake out is going to go into, yeah, it's going to go into Feeny. Okay. And there's a Sorzans. Okay. Yeah. So we read into that correctly. Please don't miss this. Okay. Nice. Let's see how much this does. Okay. Not bad. What's that? Uh, that's really close because what I, one of the plays I'm thinking of making is just switching out into Rayquaza and Icy Winding again to get the knockout. Uh... Yeah, I want to switch out into Incineroar right now. Shot into Incineroar, and do I just want to attack? Probably better to protect. Yeah, if I see Wind did a little bit more, like 5% more, I mean... <sighs> yeah, I'm just wondering if it's Rayquaza's in the range where a uh, non-Delta streamed uh, Icy Wind will knock it out. After a Dragon Ascent, it definitely will, though. So my, and my opponent kind of has to Dragon Ascent. So I'd rather just play it safer. Yeah, I see when Kyogre on this team is pretty cool. Gives you better matchups. Uh, okay, goes into Protect. Ah, U-turn, that's kind of cool. That actually hurts my opponent. Um, because he gets rid of the terrain. Or sorry, not terrain. The, the strong winds. So now I can just Icy Wind, uh, and that should get the knockout. Or, I mean, it, it still goes back to the question of does it knock it out or not. But even if it doesn't, I think if I bring it down to... Like, here I can just fake out Kyogre, obviously. I'm going to fake out Kyogre and Icy Wind. Um, 
Yeah, even if it doesn't knock it out, the Rayquaza will be in KO range from pretty much everything, and it'll be at minus 2 speed. So, yeah, let's fake out Kyogre and Icy Wind here. I also haven't revealed my full moveset, but I'm sure my opponent thinks I don't have, uh, like, Ice Beam. And Rayquaza just protects, which is a pretty obvious play. But, yeah, this is... Still a safe play to make on my end. Just a double protect, okay. Um, that's fine. I'm just gonna swap out Incineroar into Tapu Fini this next turn and click Icy Wind again. Although, one has to anticipate maybe my opponent expecting that. And switching out Rayquaza into the Togedemaru. But let's go out into Fini. Uh, if Togedemaru comes in, that's fine, especially if I get the Icy Wind off, because I'll just be faster once again, and I still have Heal Pulse. Uh, and it looks like Rayquaza is staying in. Okay. Yeah, so it's going to be... Big question is, does Icy Wind get the knockout here onto Rayquaza? Um, we've seen Dragon Sun, Sword Dance, and Protect already as three of the four moves as well. Okay, Icy Wind does connect. If it gets the knockout, this should just be game over, but it'll be really close. Nice. That is a good feeling. Yeah, that's why I double Icy Winded. Like, if I switched Kyogre into Tapu Fini, uh, the turn where I Icy Winded, things could have gotten a little bit dicier. Uh, this spell should actually proc my berry as well. Yeah, perfect. This has been as good of a game as possible, honestly. Uh, yeah, Icy Wind Kyogre on this team helps out a lot, especially in, like, the Rayogre matchup. So, I feel like yesterday my mistake really was not playing very well with Icy Wind. Like, yeah, it was just so frustrating seeing a Rayquaza switch in for free when I know I had the opportunity to Icy Wind. So, that was kind of bad, but this time around, things look a little bit better. Okay, uh, let's see. My opponent can't really knock out Fini. You can't really Thunder, obviously. You probably don't have Thunder on this team if you're running Token Amaru. Um, just checking how many turns of, there's still four turns of terrain, that doesn't really matter. So you can't paralyze with Nuzzle as well. Uh, I think it's bad just, best just to double Icy Wind here. I could switch in, but there's no point because Incineroar and Rayquaza in the back, um, should be able to close things out as my opponent just ends up forfeiting. Yeah. I feel like, uh... Rayquaza obviously just did nothing this game, uh, and that ultimately helped me out a lot. Yeah, it was kind of questionable for my opponent to have U-turned the Togedemaru out, but I think maybe my opponent was just gambling on the uh, Kyogre not protecting that turn, and just hoping that uh, Dragon Ascent would get the knockout. I don't even know if plus one Dragon Ascent knocks out, though, because this Kyogre is pretty bulky, so I feel like ultimately, uh, I Icy Wind obviously really came through in this game. But in addition, we were just in a pretty good position throughout the entire course of the match, and Tapu Fini helps out a lot in this matchup. Uh, no Kirtana from my opponent is really surprising. I feel like uh, if I were my opponent, I would definitely bring Kirtana, uh, Rayquaza, Kyogre, and... I mean, Incineroar is a pretty good last option. I'm surprised my opponent ended up bringing Togedemaru, honestly, because I feel like when you're using Togedemaru, you have to worry so much about your opponent bringing Togedemaru. So... Ultimately, I feel like because my opponent brought Togedemaru, I actually wasn't nearly as concerned because I ended up bringing Tapu Fini. Uh, yeah, Kirtana here would have been really scary because it one-shots my Tapu Fini, one-shots the Kyogre. Uh, it forces me to bring in Incineroar, but one of the ways you can get a ground on Incineroar is just obviously having Kyogre out next to Kirtana. So not having, not having to deal with Kirtana in this match made my life uh, significantly easier. So I feel like for that reason, I always felt like I was a little bit ahead of my opponent. Uh, otherwise, yeah, Pokemon choice-wise, I don't think I'm ever bringing Stack Attacka, uh, unless I learn more about my opponent's team, especially not in a game one. Like, I'd bring it if my opponent was clearly prioritizing Tapu Lele, and it was like Scarf Lele. I think that it hit a Lele in T-Preview, right? Or she, excuse me. Um, Token Amaru, you could make an argument for, especially if you anticipate your opponent in games two and three, like, not bringing, uh, their Token Amaru, if you're playing a best of three, but in best of one, they're, yeah, it's... Like, I don't think it's worth bringing Togedemaru. It's better just to play safe. Like, you always want Rayquaza, Kyogre, and Incineroar, and Tapu Fini are just safer options to bring overall. So, yeah. Um, I kind of talk about these options because, obviously, in Road to Ranked and Battle Spot, it's best of one, but all high-level competitive play is best of three. So, I think it's good to kind of assess 
you know, the times where some Pokemon just make no sense to bring, the times where it's uh, some Pokemon are the safest options to bring in the first game, and options where how I would adjust going into a games two and three if I were to play a best of three. Um, because, yeah, I wish I wish we could do best of threes on Road to Rank, because I, I think, like, a lot of the times they take a loss in game one and be able to at least figure out what I would probably do in the second and third game. Not sure if, you know, I would actually win with that, but leads into potential options. But, yeah, anyway, I've been rambling on for a bunch. Uh, some pretty solid games today, I think. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how they went. Game one definitely would have considered scalding ground on uh, just because wide guard Celestial was pretty obvious. But, uh... Yeah, I feel like in that position, I'm, I'm still thinking about it. Like, in that position, Celestila is almost never protecting. Uh, unless, the one possible play is protect Celestila, switch out into Venusaur. Uh, but if that happens, that's fine, because I switched into Incineroar that turn. So then I can just fake out. Uh, or even switch back out into Rayquaza. But, yeah, I guess it's still always better to Scald Grout on there because Celesteel is never going to really do damage against Kyogre, and if the Venusaur switches in, I've got Incineroar out. Um, so, ended up working out, like you could have played out a bunch of different ways, but uh, yeah, I think my opponent just wasn't putting enough of a threat on the other slot for me to really consider anything. Anyway, yeah, that's going to be it. Sorry, I've been rambling just thinking about the endgame scenario there, but we did get two wins, which is quite nice. So I think I'll play one more episode with this team, and then I'll switch to... Uh, there's so many different teams I want to try out. Uh, Paul Chua won regionals with a pretty standard Zern Groudon team, but that team definitely uh, is really strong, so I want to give that a go. Mm, there was a really, really cool team that won a European regionals that had, like, Murkrow on it, so I definitely want to try that out. Uh, and Lopunny, like, two really cool Pokemon. Um, I'm trying to think what other teams I have lined up. Uh, just a bunch of different things that people have offered as well. So if there's something you want me to try out, definitely let me know in the comments below and I'll consider it. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next episode. All right, peace.